Good morning, New Mercy. We want to welcome you to our online worship service. If you're just stopping by, we want to welcome you as well. If you're happy to be in the online house of the Lord, say amen. Amen. I'm just really excited to worship together. Um, I feel like we're off on a new season as we just celebrated our 10th anniversary. Um, can we just turn to our neighbor and just say, I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. I just, I just want to invite you just to um, open your hands, just in a posture of faith to just receive the Holy Spirit, receive more of the Holy Spirit as we pray. Father, we thank you so much for um, the gift of life, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness and your steadfast love, your unfailing love, God. We pray for your guidance. We pray for more of your Holy Spirit. We open up our hands and our hearts, God. We open up every door. We pray that your voice come and speak. We pray that the name of Jesus be lifted on high. So we thank you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship together. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you
up a shout offering to the Lord, clap offering, thank you Jesus, you are worthy.
and you will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead our eyes will look on your glorious face shining like the sun who is like you God you are holy 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 God most high and God most worthy you are holy 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 Jesus you are Jesus you Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I made the choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Sing, Shepherd of my soul. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made the choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream, the shepherd of my soul is by my side. Should I face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep, the shepherd of my soul will be my guide. Sing, Shepherd of my soul. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made the choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream, the shepherd of my soul is by my side. Should I face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep, the shepherd of my soul will be my guide. Be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream, the shepherd of my soul is by my side. Should I face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep, the shepherd of my soul will be my God. It's so good. God is so good. God is 
so good. You're so good to me. See, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Father, we thank you, Lord. We just remember just your word, even from last week, God, that you are our shepherd. That you go before us. I pray, Lord God, that you would remind us that, Lord, you are the Lord of all the earth. Not only over our lives, God, but, Lord God, all the earth is in your hands. So, Father, I just pray all anxiety, all worry, that, Lord, you will bring comfort in those areas. Father, I pray that you would breathe fresh hope into our hearts. That, Lord, we will be known, the new mercy will be known as people of hope and expectation. That, Lord, um, just as David wrote, Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. We really believe that, God. So we thank you, we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Here in the silence, standing on this dry ground, trusting the promise, you're where my hope is found. I'm breathing in, I'm letting go, ready for you to move. The ground is open, new life is breaking through. Hello, uh, welcome to New Mercy, uh, our Sunday service here today. Uh, whether you're joining us for the first time, second, or you're a long-standing member, we welcome you warmly to our church. Um, I am Hyun Suk, I'm one of the elders here at New Mercy Community Church, and I want to just go through a couple of announcements. Uh, before I do that, I want to uh, just Remember this past week where we celebrated our 10 year anniversary and I got to see a lot of your faces on Saturday. We got to all connect in a different way other than just virtually, which is really nice with an ice cream truck for the kids, activities, uh, and some raffle tickets where people won some new prizes. But most, most importantly, we had our 10 year anniversary uh, where we can remember what God has done for us in this church during the past 10 years and how faithful he has been. And it was just so neat to celebrate that even during this time. And it was so neat to, even on Sunday in our special service, to connect with some of you on Zoom service and the Zoom breakout rooms. Uh, really, really nice to see a lot of your faces, and I'm hoping a lot of you got to connect with other people and enjoyed that time as well. Uh, as you go through this Sunday, I want to just go through two announcements. Number one, uh, really, really important is our nominating committee has ended their process uh, or concluded their process, and they have finished uh, with two deacon nominations and one elder nominee. Uh, the two deacon nominees are one, Danny Kim, and two, Patty Park. And our elder nominee is Andy Chan. Uh, really, really, it means a lot to be elected here. Uh, really an honor uh, to be uh, called by the Lord to serve in this capacity. But as we kind of go through this process, we want to make sure the church prays for them before the church uh, votes on their nomination. Uh, during this time, please pray for them, and may you continue to keep them in mind. And we thank our nominating committee for going through this grueling and intensive process to elect our nominees for this upcoming year. Again, the nominees are Danny Kim, Patty Park, Andy Chan. The vote will be on October 25th at the end of Community Month, which we are currently in. So mark down your calendars, October 25th, we will vote for our nominees. In the meantime, please pray for them. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the leaders here at the church and we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. 
Um, speaking of Community Month, uh, we are in the midst of it right now. We just started, and we have devotionals on Instagram that are posted daily. It's also on Facebook. Our Instagram account is NewMercyCC, and if you follow us, you can see every day posted a short, commu short community devotional with a short questionnaire where you can answer and kind of get involved with uh, the question by responding uh, in our comments. Uh, so please uh, join in, respond in comments, uh, connect with us, and join us in our devotionals as we kind of go through this together as a community. Um, we really invite you to do this as we continue to encourage each other, uh, as we continue to lift one another up during this time. Um, with that said, uh, again, we warmly welcome you to our Sunday service, and, and we are in the midst of our community month, which you hold very, very special in our hearts here at New Mercy. As we do every year at New Mercy Community Church, during our community month, we get to hear amazing stories and testimonies from our individual members at New Mercy Church. Um, and as members, we get to really listen in and learn from them and be touched by their stories. And a real special thanks to all those that took the time to share their stories for this community month. This week, uh, we have Piljay, Alice, and their family sharing their stories with us today. Let's take a listen and watch. Hello, New Mercy. I'm Piljay, and this is my wife, Alice. And we're here to tell you what God has been, God has been doing in our family recently. And this is a story uh, through the eyes of our children. Micah, do you want to tell us what happened a few weeks ago? Um, so one day me and my sister were flying board and then, and then suddenly she fell down like at like like boom like it was it was so sudden that I just realized it and then she, she said that she couldn't get up from the ground and I ran I ran straight to my parents and then and then I told them to come and then after we had to go straight home and then and then we put, we gave her some ice. So what happened to what happened to her? Um she sprained her ankle. Okay. Was she able to walk or no. Okay. And it was very swollen, right? Yeah. Okay. She got crutches, and then uh, she was just like, she, if she, it was pretty bad, like if she did not have the crutches, she would just be like crawling around everywhere. So like, yeah, she was in pain. She was just using her crutches like that. And then Pastor Tina came and DK, and they offered to pray for her. And yeah, I was just there to watch. I didn't really think it was anything was going to happen. So then they started praying. They went around. They we all put our hands around her ankle. So there was it was, it was pretty cool. Um, it was my turn, and I did not know what to say. So I thought I was just like not going to do anything. But then Pastor Tina told me to pray, and I didn't want to. But like. So my mind was blank. I didn't have anything in my mind to say about, but like somehow something just came to my mind. I just started praying. It was probably like the best prayer I've ever done, but I'm not really that good at praying. And then like, so she started rotating her ankle and like she could not do this before. Like you know, this was only like a day after. And then she like started walking around and then she started crying and then everybody was crying and yeah. Um, so after she got healed, she was able to walk around uh, pretty normally. Um, it was uh, really amazing. And it only took a few days before she was able to move normally with her legs. So this event was very important for us. Uh, for our family, it really served as a confirmation that God loves us. He's with us and He wants to walk with us through our lives. It was a miracle that, that we as a family witnessed and we will never forget. I remember Kaylin saying that she knew that she was going to be healed. And afterwards, she declared that uh, there would be more to come and pray over our family. 
You see, just one year ago, our daughter Kaylin was in a very different place. We can never have imagined Kaylin to be praying over our family as she did that night. She had studied diligently throughout her middle school years and had been accepted to a competitive magnet school. We were all so excited for her to start her new high school. But as Kaylin started off her school year, um, the first few weeks uh, during this transition time proved to be very stressful and difficult for her. She had to leave the comfort and familiarity of our small town that she grew up in, where she had her group of friends and she knew all the kids, which is a pretty big deal for a 14-year-old girl. The transition began to bring about intense feelings of anxiety for her, so much so that on some days she felt like she could not go to school. It was during these times that the enemy began to attack our family in different ways. For Kaylin, the enemy began whispering his lies to her, bringing about feelings of worthlessness and hopelessness. It pained us so greatly to see our daughter struggling and suffering in this way. It felt as though our world around us was crumbling down. Every morning I would wake up filled with such anxiety, um, with a pit in the bottom of my stomach. Uh, I would go and open her room in the morning to wake her up and um, I would not know how she would be doing that day and if she was going to be able to go to school that morning. As she was going through her own anxiety, um, I was experiencing my own anxiety and worthlessness as a mother that was parallel to hers. I blame myself thinking, did I not make her feel loved enough? If I did, then why would she be having these feelings? And had we not provided her with the right foundation, what had we done wrong? One Sunday night, I was in her room with her, and she was really upset because the next day was Monday, and she did not want to go to school. I talk, tried to talk her through it, but um, I realized that I was getting nowhere, and that I could nothing I could do or say was going to help her. As we prayed together, she began to share with me that although she does believe in God, she did not feel Him, and that although she prays and cries out to Him for help, she felt as though she was talking into the air. She said she was not sure if He was truly real, because thus far in her life she had not experienced Him in a tangible way. I knew what she meant, because as I was going through the struggle with my daughter, I too felt as though God was far away. I did not understand why our family had to go through this struggle. Even so, we kept praying and asking God to make himself real to Kaylin, so that she could be so sure of his love for her. During this time, I called upon Pastor Tina and Pastor Lisa for many SOS prayers. We met in person and they prayed for Kaylin individually as well as for myself individually. And during my prayer times with them is when I began to realize that I needed to give my daughter to God and trust that he loves her even more than I do. Um, the Lord spoke to me that she was just a gift that was given to us, but that she belongs to him ultimately. He told me that he would take care of her and that all I needed to do was to let go of her and to trust in him. I really could not have gotten through those difficult times without them. I would send them texts here and there saying, please pray for us today and I knew that we would be covered and protected from the enemy. So earlier this year in January, the, the youth group was going on a retreat with other churches. Um, we, we weren't surprised that Keelan did not want to go, uh, and she was really undecided until the last minute. But for whatever reason, she decided that she would go on the last day. Um, and we were just praying that, that she would have a breakthrough and encounter God during the retreat, which we knew that it would be uh, uh, would be life-changing for her. Hi, this is Kaylin, and I'm going to be sharing what happened at the retreat. Um, so this is actually the first time that I was able to see the Holy Spirit really touch people, especially people that I had a personal relationship with. And it was like mind-blowing seeing them break down and just be overcome by the Holy Spirit. After seeing what the Holy Spirit was capable of, I started to pray that, Lord, if you're truly real and if everything you say is true, then will you prove it to me? Will you give me a miracle? The final night of the retreat, there was this new feeling in the air that I sensed. 
this newness and something incredible happened where usually my mind is racing constantly with thoughts about what other people are thinking about what's happening and I'm constantly very conscious of what's happening around me but for the first time I totally let go of all of that and I was only focusing on Jesus and we had an altar call and I was the first person up there and that honestly says a lot because I'm very shy and I would never think about doing that but in that moment I was not thinking about anything else and I simply went up the first person in the front and I just knelt down and was on my knees for who knows how long and I just started to cry and in front of everybody I don't know in that moment he showed me he all of my life how in every single moment where I felt so alone and so hurt he showed me exactly where he was in the picture I saw myself in my room crying and I saw Jesus like patting my back right next to me and he showed me when I was a child and how he's watching me run around and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen he literally played a movie of my life but with him in it and Oh, I was smiling and crying tears of joy. I prayed to the Lord for some sign that this was him and not the devil tricking me or just my own thoughts tricking me. And he sent Eden over to me and she came and she prayed with me and she cried with me. And she told me about how in the darkness the Lord was always with me. And she said some things that she would have no idea she should have no idea of and I was just blown away by the preciseness of all of the details that were spoken and yeah it was so amazing and I just felt my body felt so light the pressure was lifted up I can feel it and I start to shake as the Holy Spirit came I was shaking so much like trembling and it didn't stop until I came home um, until the next day actually and I just remember for the first time just feeling so happy and so joyful and a joy that I've never experienced before. So after the retreat, um, Kaylin's really grown so much um, just in her understanding of God and in her personal relationship with Him. She's truly found new hope and we're just so thankful to Pastor Tina, especially for guiding her through this process. Um, she has just such a hunger to know God more and Pastor Tina, um, she was so willing to just lead discipleship groups. Um, and even during the whole pandemic, she met with Kaylin virtually almost every day to do Bible studies with her. I think the, the experience of witnessing the healing for our family has set a, a new tone uh, for how children view God um, as an all-powerful and al almighty being. Uh, they were able to witness firsthand the healing that took place in our own living room right here, actually. Now, when an anyone in our family is hurt or not feeling well, uh, we will we sometimes see them actually laying hands and praying for uh, one another. And this is not to say that all of our problems are gone, of course, um, but, but we are very thankful and grateful that God has saved our daughter's life and she has found new hope. We realize that this is the most important thing we can pray for our children, um, their salvation and their relationship with God. And we will end our um, video with our favorite verse, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18, which says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far out outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now, have you ever seen anything like that before? No, not really. Were you were you shocked when you saw it? Yeah, it was pretty shocking. 
How about you, how about you guys? Yup. Totally mind blown. Um, I have like, never seen a miracle before. I always have heard about them, but it's pretty amazing, like the power of God. Now I want to invite you to please join me in praying for the offering. God, we love you uh, and we look to you for all things, especially our daily provisions and especially for the way you love us and the way you warmly accept us uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ. God, during this time of offering, uh, we give to you with joyful hearts because we know and we trust that you can take all things and use it for your good in ways that we cannot even imagine. We also... Um, Again, remember that all things are yours and that these are all your provisions that we return to you because we want to acknowledge uh, just how faithful you have been in our lives and how faithful you continue to be to our church. Lord, uh, we lift up all things to you. May we give with joyful, cheerful hearts that are humble and that is willing uh, to see your kingdom uh, bear fruit on this earth. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. Please follow along on your screen. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, the people assembled together as one in Jerusalem. Then Joshua, son of Zozadak, and his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and his associates, began to build the altar of the God of Israel to sacrifice burnt offerings on it in accordance with what is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Despite their fear of the peoples around them, they built the altar on its foundation and sacrificed burnt offerings on it to the Lord, both the morning and evening sacrifices. Then in accordance with what is written, they celebrated the festival of tabernacles with the required number of burnt offerings prescribed for each day. After that, they presented the regular burnt offerings, the new moon sacrifices, and the sacrifices for all the appointed sacred festivals of the Lord, as well as those brought as free will offerings to the Lord. On the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, though the foundation of the Lord's temple had not yet been laid. Amen. Good morning, New Mercy. Hope you are well. God is good. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Welcome to Community Month. We're so excited for this special uh, season. I hope you had a great time last weekend. Hope you got to join us. Uh, it was just an awesome time, just a meeting and coming together physically. Uh, so thank you so much. Especially we want to um, shout out to Rebecca, Pastor Rebecca, for all the children's stuff planning, for our amazing sister Marie, who is the head of the special events ministry for all her work and all the volunteers, you know, youth group students, college students. I mean, there's so many people who helped. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a really memorable uh, weekend. And we thank our Lord for his faithfulness over the 10 years. Uh, you know, someone mentioned that uh, perhaps the 10 years of God's faithfulness was a foundation that God is building for the greater things that is to come. And, you know, really was convicted of that because sometimes, you know, you do community for 10 years and you could get a little tired and weary, but we forget our Lord, you know, he had just so much more in store for us. Amen. So uh, let us hold fast. Let us, as Hebrews talks about, not give up in coming together and continually growing together and longing for the deeper things of God. I am absolutely convinced that the Lord is not done with our community. and There's so much more to come. So please do pray with us and lean in, you know, join with us, you know, continue to uh, uh, come together uh, as a community and we will grow together in the Lord. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your testimonies today. Uh, Alice Pilche, Kaylin, Noah, Luki, Micah, who did I forget? Uh, thank you so much, guys, for sharing your testimony. Uh, every story is valued here in our community, and I think every story is faith building. You know, we our faith is built through hearing the stories, but also sharing the stories. It's, the, it's very powerful. Uh, once we also share the story. So thank you for sharing your testimony uh, and glorifying our Lord. 
we have two more testimonies coming the rest of community month. So uh, we're so excited. And, uh, you know, exactly this is at the heart of community month. We want to hear from one another. We want to make sure that we come together on the same page through all our brokenness, through the ups and downs. We want to be honest, real, authentic. This is who we are. This is where we are. And Lord, you know, examine us and take us further, deeper. So we pause this month to celebrate, to to honor, to uh, uplift people, uh, but also most of all, to appreciate each other and to really thank our God for this gift called uh, community, the local church. So once again, just thank you. This year, the pastors decided uh, rather than a typical, you know, sermon on the church, you know, uh, we wanted to actually highlight what we hold to the utmost importance. So we, these are our, our values. What are some of our highest values that we hold true here at uh, New Mercy? And, you know, we have our vision, Church for the Broken, Call to Restoration, given 10 years ago, Lord just clearly giving us this direction to be a church for the broken, those who are hurting, who don't know me, you know, you know relationally, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, there are a lot of brokenness around us, and be that church for the broken. And don't just become gatherers of the broken, but lead them into restoration point them to Jesus Christ. And we've been running this race for 10 years. So that's our vision, Church for the Broken, Call to Restoration. But we also have a set of values, things that as we operate, as we grow as a community, things that we cherish, that these are things that are important to us. So the pastors, you know, for the next, the rest of this month, want to highlight these values so that we will come, we can come together in the same page once again. The first value that I want to highlight today is, and this could be our one of our highest value, is we have a value statement in the area of worship. We want to be a church that grows in worship, but not only just worshiping the Lord together, but we want to encounter the Lord. So one of our values that we have is a value of we want to be a community that really encounters the Lord, especially through our worship. We want to be a community that encounters the Lord. Uh, today's text, Ezra chapter 3, uh, one of my favorite texts in the Bible. <laughs> I've been saying this a lot for those who are in my journey through the Bible class. Shout out. Uh, knows that every text I say is my favorite because in some sense it is true. You know, Word of God, every portion is my favorite. This is a very powerful section in the book of the Old Testament, in the journey of the Old Testament. The book of Ezra is one of the last writings that we have in the Old Testament. So this is after the kingdom period for the journey through the Bible. People, they know what that is. Saul, David, Solomon, the kings of Israel, the highlight of the Old Testament, so-called. Then after that, the kingdom breaks into two. And because of Israel's rebellion and disobedience, eventually they get conquered and they become exiles in Assyria and in Babylon. And 70 years of in being in ruins. So the temple is already in shambles. It got ruined. You know, they got conquered as a nation. They were in exile in, in uh, Babylon. Then finally, after 70 years, they're coming back home. And they make this long journey home, and they're back in Jerusalem. And that's how the book of Ezra starts. You know, these exiles are coming back home, and they're tired, they're weary, and they're, they lost everything, their disappointment, they're angry, they're, they're hurting, they're jaded, and they come back and they see the ruins. Uh, and uh, the Lord has a promise over them, though, that He wants to rebuild this nation. He loves his people, and he wants to rebuild the people of God. So they come together, and today's text, Ezra chapter 3, is after seven months, you know, they come back and they rest, and, you know, seven months passes. Then finally, after seven months, after being home, they're gathered right at the temple, where the temple used to be. And first time, it says, they gather the people of Israel. Uh, and the first thing that they do, after they come back home, is what? Is that they build an, an altar 
before the Lord. Before, even before they rebuilt the temple of God, which temple symbolized the house of God, they built the altar where, and they sacrificed animals. So what are they doing? What they're doing is they begin the rebuilding process by starting with worship. The first and foremost thing the Israelites do, once again, is they honor God by worship, by worshiping the Lord. You know, any kind of rebuilding, especially spiritual rebuilding, it will start with worship. I'm going to say that again. Any type of spiritual rebuilding or rebirth will start with worship. Sometimes people say, what about prayer? What about repentance? All this stuff. Yes, those are important. But when I say worship, what we're talking about is we're talking about the presence of God. Any type of spiritual rebirth or returning or rebuilding or restoration is going to start with the presence of God. And the presence of God is at the heart of worship. That's why worship is one of the most important things for the community of, of people of God. You know, here at New Mercy, definitely there are many, many things that we hold, you know, value and other values and things that are important to us, significant to us. But perhaps maybe one of the highest values that we hold is this, that we want to be a worshiping community that truly encounters our God. Amen. Uh, so today, just quickly, rest of the sermon, rest of this message. Uh, so how do we encounter the Lord in our worship? What does it mean for us individually and also corporately to become worshipers that encounter our God? What does that mean? Well, the Bible has many places uh, that teaches us about worship. I just want to highlight maybe three areas, three things that can help us individually, but also corporately uh, to grow as worshipers that, that truly encounters the Lord. That every time we worship individually, corporately, uh, in our worship living, uh, worship serving, whatever, all that we do, that we can encounter the Lord. I think the first principle perhaps can be uh, what I kind of mentioned first and foremost is number one, worship has to do with presence. Worship has to do with presence. So when we leave out the presence aspect, if God is not there, uh, then we miss the whole thing. Why? Because worship is not just singing. Worship is not just serving. Worship is not just doing things for God. It's not about religion. It's not about, re it's not about religiosity. But worship, at the end of the day, is a relational thing. It's about presence. It's about a person. You know, for us in the New Testament, it's about Jesus Christ. So if we miss Jesus Christ in our worship, then we miss it all. So it's, it's inviting of the Holy Spirit. It's inviting of the presence of our Father. It's, it's, it's the joy of Jesus Christ. It's about presence. You know, today, this whole symbolic thing about the Israelites coming back and building the altar first. Remember, they're building it on top of what it used to be the temple. And back in the Old Testament, what was temple? Temple was where God said, I will dwell. It was his home. It was his house. Meaning what? It was the place of the presence of God. That's why for the Israelites, they were called to go to the temple and worship and sacrifice because that's where the presence of God was. See, worship is always connected to God's presence. And in order for us to encounter God, have worship as a community that truly is encountering God, we first have to continually embrace God's presence, allow the presence of God to move in and through us, in and through our community. And it is our prayer, and we hold high to this value. Lord, help us continue to grow to be a community that that we become worshipers, we become worshipers that encounters you. So the first thing in encountering uh, God through worship is presence. The second thing uh, I want to highlight perhaps is uh, worship is also affection. Worship is affection. We often forget that because what we do in worship is uh, it's a relational thing, right? It's about presence. It's about encountering and meeting a person, meeting the Spirit of God. Uh, we cannot forget that the heart of that is also, it's about love. It's about loving God, right? At the heart of worship is, is it's an affection thing. 
you know, we worship what we love. Amen? Right? You know, oh, I love hamburgers, I love Apple, iPhones, or whatever, we use that language. But it's somewhat true, it's connected to what's on your heart. Things that we hold our affection upon, put a place our affection upon, at the end of the day, that's what we're worshiping. So same thing with worshiping God, corporately, individually. Times when our worship is low, we feel like we're getting, right? We're losing our worship. We're not worshiping God. We lose interest. You know, church, even Christian music. Think about it. What's happening? It's our, our affections. It's, it's going low. Right? We're losing our affection. Uh, you know, we need to love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. You know, that's the first and foremost uh, commandment uh, that God gives us. Love Him. Okay? And that's worshiping God. <coughs> Remember, um, the Bible talks about John chapter 4, when Jesus comes and encounters this Samaritan woman who's at the well. Uh, amazing story of Jesus encountering a Gentile woman back then, which was unheard of. And this very powerful encounter as Jesus is loving on her, embracing this broken person to come into his kingdom. In the middle of that, there's a very interesting that, that, that takes place. And one thing is Jesus teaching her about worship of God. I don't know if you guys remember John chapter 4. And, you know, this lady, this woman asks, you know, we are to call to worship in this mountain or that mountain. And Jesus said, you missed the whole thing. The point is, uh, wor the worshipers that God is looking for is someone who worships the Lord in spirit and in truth. That's it. Very simple. It's someone who can really connect with the Lord. You know, God is spirit. They're connecting with the Lord in his spirit. And also, honestly, authenticity. Uh, coming before the Lord with, in truth sincerity. And that's it, in connecting with Him. And Jesus teaches us the lesson. And you know, part of loving God is that, is coming before the Lord and, Lord, you know, take me as I am. Lord, you know, I'm lost, I'm tired, I'm weary, I'm joyful. Just honest, sincerely. And as we connect with the Lord, we're, we're honoring God, we're worshiping God. And I, I, I believe that that's how we also encounter the Lord. So that's number two. Number one, Worship has to do with presence, everything, presence. If we miss the presence, we, miss, we can't even begin to worship. It's pointless. Second thing is, worship is relational. Therefore, it is affection. Worship is about loving God. It's cherishing God. It's remembering how much God loves us and what He has done for us. You know, it's revelation, God revealing His love, and us responding to that love. The last one that uh, we want to close today is, also, in, in order for us to encounter God in worship, it's about uh, posture. It's about posture. Uh, psalm chapter 51, uh, remember the story of uh, the Psalm of David, his repentance, his coming before the Lord, uh, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. After he commits the sin with Bathsheba, he confesses and he, he's being restored. In that beautiful Psalm, uh, David writes about how the, you know, the sacrifice that God uh, embrace, accepts is a, a broken spirit and a contrite heart you will never despise. A broken spirit and a contrite heart you will never despise. Something that has to do with posturing. You know, worship is definitely, it's about presence, it's about affection, but also I believe that posture of a person. You know, there's something about humility that goes a long time. Really understanding who our God is, this beautiful, magnificent, awesome, powerful God, our Father, who sent His one Son, Jesus Christ, to us, and therefore we are responding. And there is a hard posture that is to take place. And when, when that comes together, I believe that sets up an atmosphere for us to really encounter Lord, the Lord in a very special way. You know, today, uh, once again, in this Ezra 3 text, we see the Israelites coming back, building the altar, honoring and starting with worship. But in the middle of the section, it also says that, you know, they were scared. You know, some people were fearful because of the people around them. Uh, but yet they go on and they continue to sacrifice and they celebrate. Uh, and they eventually get to build that temple. 
you know, many years later, they build a second temple, and God renews His commitment, and the people are restored. Because at the end of the day, the Lord wants to rebuild a nation. He wants His people back. He loves us. New Mercy, this is one of the highest values that we hold. We want to become a church. We want to continue to grow as a church that seriously uh, is serious about worship, individually, corporately, and that we can become a community that uh, that the presence of God is felt, and that we become affection people of affection that loves the Lord, and also we walk humbly with the Lord. And so continue to pray with us. Let's pray together through the rest of this community month. Uh, as we celebrate and as we honor God and honor each other. I, I mean, let me just pray for us. We'll close. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your uh, just loving, uh, kind, patient presence over us. Father, uh, we look back the past 10 years and Lord, uh, just, just so much, so much, so many things, so many testimonies, stories, but we know that you're not done, Father. So will you take us out, take us forward, Father, to glorious things, greater things, grander things. So we thank you so much. Father, we want to hold true that we want to first and foremost become a worshiping community that sincerely loves you. Really, our heart will continue to grow in loving affection towards you, Father, that we will hold your presence in all that we do. So be with us, watch over us. All things in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. He 
sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. I'll pray for us and close today in the benediction. Father, we thank you for who you are. We sincerely, we ask, Father, that you remind us this month, especially the, the depth of this gift called community. Lord, we're in, in no way or shape a perfect church, no way or shape a perfect community, but God, uh, we, we hunger, we desire more. We want to go deeper and further, Father. We want to continue to uh, grow with this, this beautiful vision you have given us to be a church for the broken and called to restoration. So will you go forth? Will you cover us? Will you be with us? Will you strengthen us, Father? Will you send us forward? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.